Okay. Hello, all, and um, welcome to the March edition of the Wiki Education Speaker Series. Um, this month's edition is in honor of uh, Women's Month, and we are working on tackling the gender gap on Wikipedia. And I am joined today by four wonderful panelists who I will have introduced themselves in a moment. Um, but I wanted to start off by thanking all of you for joining us. Um, those of you who haven't, please feel free to introduce yourself and share where you're coming, where you're joining us from today in the chat. Um, and I want to acknowledge up front that we're talking today about um, the gender gap in women, but I want to acknowledge that these gaps exist as well for uh, non-binary and other gender identity um, uh, people as well. And so it's important to be inclusive and these gaps are important for everyone. And so I encourage panelists to be inclusive in your answers. Um, we will sort of talk about this as women and the gender gap, but um, other gender identities are just as um, underrepresented, if not more so, on, on Wikipedia as well. Um, so, hi all, I am Leanna Davis. I am the Chief Programs Officer at Wiki Education. We are a small nonprofit organization that runs a series of programs to connect Wikipedia and subject matter experts. Um, and I want to show briefly um, a little slide here. Let me pull this up. Okay. Um, so I want to share a little bit about our organization. So if you're interested in teaching with Wikipedia, um, we run an extensive program for university faculty in the United States and Canada who are interested in assigning students to edit Wikipedia. You'll hear a little bit about that from Amanda today. Um, and that is at teach.wikiedu.org. Um, and then if you're interested and inspired to learn how to edit Wikipedia yourself or Wikidata, um, we also run a series of courses where you can sign up to, to learn how to edit Wikipedia or Wikidata, and those are at learn.wikiedu.org. And then finally, if you're interested in partnering with us to bring a Wikipedia or Wikidata course to your institution, um, I encourage you to visit partner.wikiedu.org, and you can find more information there. Um, so thank you uh, so much for those. Um, and my colleague Brianda will add those links um, in the chat as well so that you can grab them off of there. Okay. Um, so I also wanted to encourage, I have a series of questions that I will go over with our panelists today. Um, and you are welcome to add your own questions as well, either in the chat, I'll try to pull those out or using the Q&A feature on Zoom, either of those will work. Um, and we'll leave some time at the end for uh, questions from the audience. Um, but I wanted to kick us off by um, having everyone on the panel here introduce themselves. Um, so please introduce yourself, your connection to Wikipedia and women, and share why improving Wikipedia's coverage of women is so important to you. Um, Rosie, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Rosie Stevenson Goodnight, co-founder of Wiki Project Women in Red, which focuses on statistically improving Wikipedia's content gender gap across 33 language Wikipedias. I'm also a Wikipedia visiting scholar at Northeastern University, thanks to the Wiki Education Foundation for facilitating that, where my work focuses on 19th century women writers. Um, as to why improving Wikipedia's coverage of women is important to me, well, it's personal. It goes back to when I first started editing Wikipedia in 2007, and almost immediately I felt like this connection with my grandmother, who is long gone, but was a writer, a textbook editor, a professor, and a first wave feminist. And to her honor and the women of her era, I research and write a lot about historical women. But it's also important for me because of my granddaughter, so that her generation grows up with a more accurate depiction of civil society. Back to you, Leanna. Thank you so much, Rosie. What a wonderful introduction. Um, Amanda, do you want to go next? Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Marquez. I am an assistant professional professor at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and I am a trained historian, and my background is really rooted in uh, Mexican-American history, um, Chicano studies. Um, and so um, my connection to Wikipedia is that um, I participated in a... Um, 
and a Wikipedia event, like a editing event here on, on, on our campus that was organized by our fabulous librarians. Um, and the more that I got kind of in, introduced to Wikipedia and the possibilities, a colleague of mine was like, you know, have you thought about incorporating Wikipedia into your into your classroom? And so um, I was tasked that particular semester, I was tasked with teaching a Mexican American women's history course for the first time. And so I, I knew from my knowledge of the literature within Mexican American studies, Chicano studies, that um, there are there are gaps to be filled within the field about women and women's contributions to different mo so social political movements. And so I felt like this would be a perfect opportunity um, to help fill some of those gaps. Um, and I think the reason that this Wikipedia coverage of women is so critically important is very much like what Rosie said. It's about this newer generation taking ownership, sharing their knowledge, and sharing that knowledge about women and the contributions that they have, significant contributions that they've made on a, on a global basis, I think is really powerful. Um, and so I really wanted my students to be part of that experience. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Kelly. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Doyle Kim. Um, I've been a Wikipedian for almost 10 years now. Um, and in that time, I've been focused exclusively on the GLAM, which is galleries, libraries, archives, museum space, as well as the gender gap space. Um, primarily, I've been concerned with using the knowledge bases of those GLAM institutions to help improve the gender gap on the Wikimedia platforms. Um, the reason this is so important to me um, besides the reasons that Rosie has said and Amanda has said, um, of course, is the readership of Wikipedia and what we see reflected there, but also how information from Wikipedia gets utilized elsewhere across the, re the web and in all of the other languages that Wikipedia supports. Um, and if that information is missing or incomplete, it has wider implications on the internet other than just what we can see on Wikipedia. So those things really have become my, my driving force. Great. Thanks, Kelly. And last but not least, my fair. Thank you, Leanna. Well, I have a very difficult job because I think my fellow uh, panelists have said very interesting things and, and very, very truth. Um, so I, I started editing Wikipedia almost 10 years ago as well as part of like a wiki education program in Mexico. So I was a student there and then I left it for a while because life happened. Um, and I retook it uh, almost four years ago with creating a new project and anything about um, women scientists. And the reason I, I started doing this and, and my connection with Wikipedia and, and anything about women, is because I find it very important how like the impact Wikipedia has in people's life. How when we see the like biography of a scientist, a women scientist in Wikipedia, we change the mindset of the reader saying like, oh, women also do science and women also publish in amazing journals. They gain awards and they are good professors and they are they win Nobel Prizes. So trying to change the mindset of what is a scientist to you, um, that's what motivates me the most in um, writing Wikipedia, but also teaching others to, to write Wikipedia and the different events we, we kind of do. Um, but yeah, so very much that's me and what I do. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Um, so my first question is for Rosie. So Rosie, you're a co-founder of Women in Red, as you mentioned, a wiki project that encourages creating new biographies of women on Wikipedia. And you've also created many biographies yourself, as well as improving Wikipedia's coverage of women's topics. What has been the reaction of different Wikipedia editors to your project over the years? Well, thanks for the question, Leanna. I I have to say, to my surprise, the immediate reaction was activism. Editors, it, it appeared to me that editors just kind of came out of the woodwork to say that they didn't realize there was an issue, that only 15.5% of English Wikipedia's biographies at that time were about women. And they just started writing biographies that month, July. To those who are unaware, till then, for the most part, People wrote biographies about women in March, Women's History Month. But the other months, not so much. 
you know, the word kind of spread through media and other channels and more people started talking about the fact that there was a content gender gap and began writing biographies about women. And then about a year in, like say 2016, at the 2016 Wikimania, I was asked about, well, what about improving women's biographies? And how does that play into Women in Red's focus on creating women's biographies? And what I said then and I say now is that women in red can't focus on everything. We don't focus on improving biographies, that's true. We don't focus on the editor gender gap, that's true. But so there's a need for like others to stand shoulder to shoulder with us to work on the broad spectrum of gaps. I will add though, that while our name is Women in Red, our work includes minority genders. Thanks, Rosie. And I definitely encourage other panelists, if you have thoughts of, of um, or responses, or you want to also answer this question, please feel free to jump in around how other Wikipedia editors have, um, have responded to your work. And if no one has other, other thoughts, I'm happy to move on. Um, so, so Amanda, this next question is for you. So you've assigned your students to improve Wikipedia's coverage of women's history and particularly Mexican-American women's history um, through our Wikipedia student program. Can you share a bit about what inspired you to teach with Wikipedia? It sounds like you were inspired by a, a colleague, um, but how your students experience Wikipedia's gender gap or sort of how that has played out in your teaching. All right, so um, I started teaching with Wikipedia in the fall of 2018 um, as part of a Mexican American women's history course. Um, a colleague of mine that's a sociologist um, was launching um, his own, um, teaching a sociology of gender. And so we sort of thought we would kind of be our own built-in support system as we kind of navigated, you know, doing this in our classes. Um, I think for me, um, like I mentioned earlier, within the literature and specifically like Mexican American history, um, women, women's contributions still seem to be not placed at the center as they should be. And so in my course, I wanted to find a way for us, for the students to learn more about that complex history. But at the same time, I wanted them to be able to leverage their skills and knowledge to be able to share that knowledge with the public in some way. Um, I'm a big like proponent of open pedagogy. And I teach in a program that works closely with first year writing. And so I know within, within writing studies in general, this notion of like writing for the public, writing to share knowledge, um, your, your students own taking on that identity as, you know, as scholars, as knowledgeable in certain fields and sharing that with the public is, I think it's a really empowering thing for students to do. So all that to say that for me, I think, those two things kind of were what pushed me um, to pursue teaching with Wikipedia. Um, but I think overwhelmingly, you know, like I said, within the field of Mexican American history, there's just isn't a lot about women. And if women are part of the narrative, they they serve in secondary roles, support roles. It's they're never placed at the center. And so I wanted my students to focus their research and their writing, placing women at the center and putting their that those particular biographies, put them out there for the world to engage with um, in, in really meaningful ways. And so for my students, I really encouraged them to try to create new articles. And a lot of them did. Um, there were some that added content to existing articles or topics like for example, Tejano, you know, Tejano music is a big, you know, it's one of the, the singular pages on Wikipedia. But within that larger topic, there's nothing about Tejana artists, you know. And so I asked, took it upon themselves to add in the biography, biographies of specific women who contributed to, you know, the creation of that, that style of regional style of music. So just finding different ways to not only like place their stories at the center, but also to embed right, those biographies um, within existing pages. And so I think, I think for my students, what they note, one of them just, just said, said something to me in a, in, a, in a class one day that just kind of blew my mind. She said, I said, okay, who, who are you, who are you, who are you researching? What are you finding? You're going to, you know, and she's like, well, I'm looking for this. I Googled her and she wasn't there. 
And so I said, okay, so that's step one. You, you, you try to look some things, you try, you try to find some information, but okay, she wasn't there. So what is that? What is that task for you? What does that mean for you then? And so then we talked about, okay, step one, you go through your research process. And so now having said that those biographies, she is there. Right. Um, and so I think that's been what probably one of the most powerful things for me is students having that experience and taking ownership um, over that content and feeling so empowered to share that content with the public. I think it's just, it's a really powerful, um, it was probably one of the most powerful things I've ever done in my teaching career. So I don't know if I answered your question. That was a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. But, no, yeah, no, that, that, you know, that was, that was wonderful, Amanda. I think we hear that a lot of, you know, from faculty who are teaching with Wikipedia. And I think something you said there was really important of, you know, it's not just creating the biographies, it's also including links to those biographies and other articles to make sure that there's traffic coming into these pages, um, you know, that we women's accomplishments are recognized in the broader articles that get traffic. Of course, it's important to have them there in general. So when you Google somebody, they appear, right? But it's also that sort of interconnectedness and the 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 magic that comes from from Wikilinks that enables people um people to to get more information about things. Why don't you go ahead? Sorry, I don't know if I can jump in here. I just, um, Please remind, do. as I said at the beginning, I started editing Wikipedia because of a wiki education program. And one of the things that my teacher in the time, um, he, he said to us was like, well, editing an article in Wikipedia as your final project from the subject, it's better than just writing an essay because your, your essay, only your teacher will see it. Maybe your peers in your classroom, like, can you please help me check the grammar and spelling, whatever. But it's like in week, like by editing a Wikipedia article or even better creating a new one, you create these links and you you allow more editors to see it and to give you feedback about it, but you also can like change the perspective. So it's like really um, fascinating for me to hear about this um, person, this woman that you were trying to, to research, but you didn't have enough information and then you just create that. And I think this part of content creation from the encyclopedic perspective is, is really good. And it's, as a student, I I lived it and it was amazing. And now that I am in the part, not teaching as, as you do as a professor, but like teaching others to edit Wikipedia and share my experiences, it's, it's really motivating to, to see how we, we are creating and we're actually making a change. Uh, truth is that, yeah, women and, and many uh, other minorities are still being a minority in Wikipedia, but I think a change is being done and I can see an improvement of new biographies and even biographies that were already there but had very little content, they now have more references, more information, and they're more robust. So yeah, I think I think it's really, really interesting then. So yes, <laughs> to comment in. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else have thoughts on this? Just to say a plus one. Mara Fur, that writing an essay is something, as you said, only you will see or maybe you share with the other people in the class. But writing on Wikipedia, it's it's like forever. Absolutely. So my my next question is for Kelly. Um so Kelly you mentioned you've worked with a lot of cultural institutions or GLAM as we call it in the the, the wiki movement. Um, and when you were with the Smithsonian, you worked with Wiki Education to host a series of our wiki scholars courses that train different Smithsonian affiliate staff on how to improve coverage of women on um, relevant to their institutions collections. And I know this was a really important project for us and for you and had some incredible results. Um, so what role do you see cultural institutions playing in helping to address Wikipedia's gender gap? I think there's so much potential with GLAMs and cultural heritage institutions worldwide. Um, one, because they have so much stored knowledge, of course, but they also have images of women in their collections, artworks of 
or by, about women, and all of the discoveries that have been made by women throughout history and the associated artifacts that go along with it, all of those things, um, given some copyright issues, and we can get into that if we need to down the line, all of that stuff can live on Wikipedia. Um, we can put the images on Wikimedia Commons. We can enrich data on Wikidata. We can write articles from some of the discoveries and research that's happening within museums themselves about women that are in the archives. Um, so cultural heritage institutions are really crucial. I, I see it in the gender gap process because they can kind of start to close the gender gaps at scale within their language communities on Wikipedia because of the nature of batch uploads, because of the staff that they have to be able to do some of that research for us, to be able to give us names, which become red links for Women in Red, which is Rosie's project, um, so that more people know that these women's stories are out there. Let's say the Smithsonian has them. Here are the resources. Can we as a volunteer community get some of these articles created? Um, so I think in partnership with Wikipedia, volunteers, digital strategies at cultural heritage institutions and the people at those institutions themselves, like the curators, the archivists doing, those, doing that work, um, we can really start to tip the scale even further than what's already been done by GLAM institutions and volunteers in the past. Um, to run closer to equality on Wikipedia as much as possible. Um, I also think that there's a lot of space for growth within the cultural heritage world in terms of the gender gap. When I was at the Smithsonian, I think I had six different interns over five years who were learning about editing Wikipedia, who were creating um, articles about um, women from our 21 different museums and those archives as well as helping to institute digital strategy that includes openness and that includes friendly copyright concerns for things that can be used on Wikimedia Commons, as well as Wikipedia just being part of the digital strategies of museums, libraries, archives. I think as those things get more robust, we'll see deeper change within the Wikipedia world in terms of gender equity as those things really get added at scale to the three main platforms, Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons. Um, and really hoping too that more outreach can be done, which was what we had done, um, Liana, with some smaller GLAMs, which is what the Smithsonian um, affiliates are. There's a lot of regional history that larger museums like the Smithsonian just haven't been able to collect. And so doing, doing outreach to those smaller archives and museums is really important because there's so much um, history that's notable, especially about women's accom accomplishments regionally or state by state, that's not on Wikipedia, that could be, and that could be tied back into our volunteer community state by state as well. So I think that a lot has already been done in the glam world around the gender gap and just for Wikipedia in general, not just the gender gap, but there's still a lot more that we can do to try to close the gender gap by these large behind the scenes processes to like batch uploads and things. Yeah, Kelly, and I'm, I'm remembering um, and reflecting on something Amanda said earlier around the sort of, you know, Googling and she wasn't there kind of thing. This is where cultural institutions can also play such a critical role because they have archives and documents and, you know, information that are from reliable sources about women but may or may not be readily accessible um, at your fingertips from Google. And so I, I feel like that sort of connection between cultural institutions and getting information out there about um, in the incredible accomplishments of women in history, um, especially in those sort of smaller and regional museums can be really, really impactful. Yeah. And in just under my five years at the Smithsonian, we added over 2.2 million words about American women from Smithsonian collections to Wikipedia English and images we um, batch uploaded are viewed over 65 million times in 22 different language versions. So if we expand that out to glams all over the world, that's a lot of impact. That's a lot of percentage points towards changing the gender gap um, on all of the different language Wikipedias. Absolutely, and that's such important work, I think especially the sort of multilingual um, multilingual nature of, um, of the Wikipedia work enables such really, um, really great dissemination of information globally, um, which I think is a great uh, lead in my to a question for you here. Um, so uh, you were a member of the, the group 500 Women Scientists and you participated in one of our Wiki Scientist courses that we ran on improving biographies of women in science. 
And then you have also created the Wiki Cientificas Mexicanas with Wikimedia Mexico. Um, can you share a little bit more about your project? Yes, I think it comes as a great answer for Anne's question in, in the chat. Um, so my project is actually about writing about women in, in science. Um, the name of my project is Wiki Cientificas Mexicanas, which translate as uh, Mexican women in science, Wiki Mexican women in science. Um, and, and it just started in 2020, actually, when um, Jess Wade, uh, some of the Wiki people may know her, she was Wiki Median of the Year, she was hosting or she was participating in a in an edit-a-thon organized by the American Chemical Society online um, workshop, uh, online conference that year because of um, COVID and all that. And they had this edit-a-thon to edit about um, underrepresented communities. And I was like, oh, it's been a while that I edit Wikipedia. I remember doing it. And why not? Let me, I mean, I'm home, this behind my computer. Let's do this. And while I was doing it, I realized that also Latin American and, and Mexican women they they were lacking most of them their wiki their um wiki biography so i i was at that time in an organization in mexico that unfortunately it's now dissolved and i started talking that out i contacted my previous teacher from um college about this thing and we just started connecting um the dots and we created this project so wikimedia mexico has been a crucial part in in my project in, in creating it and organizing edit-a-thons and we, we've expanded not only about writing um, mostly about Mexican women in science, but also expanding uh, to Latin American people. And one of the goals for, for this year, for the future, is to expand for other underrepresented communities. Um, so that, that's that's pretty much what I do. It's mostly in, in Spanish Wikipedia, but we're trying to expand to, to more Wikipedias, particularly, I mean, English should be the most natural way to to go um, this year during February, the, um, February 11th, we celebrate the Women in Science Day um, by UNESCO. So we decided to make a campaign that lasted for the whole month of February, where we were collecting photographs of uh, women in science. So we were asking people to just upload their photos in Wiki Commons, you know, like people doing science, but I mean, scientists, but not only in the lab or, you know, like in the field work, but also giving a presentation, giving a class. They're also scientists and there are the multiple faces of being a scientist because that's one of the things where I'm trying to change or we're trying to change in, in my project. Not, not only showing a scientist like with a lab coat in the lab or like behind a microscope, like, no, we also go to conferences, we do classes, we, we write papers and sometimes we're behind a computer, you know? So this kind of thing is, is um, what, what I do. So if you're interested in knowing more, I'll leave my contact information down there. We can like connect um, for Anne that was asking this question. And yeah, that's that's pretty much what my project do, goes about. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And I think the the point about um about images is such an important one of um I know I personally have attempted to find openly licensed images, uh, openly licensed image on Wikimedia Commons for women in science, and it can be very difficult. Um and you know, making sure that we have that kind of just representation of women exist in the world. Women do science all of the time, and there's so many different ways of doing science, right? It's not just the lab coat and the beaker kind of, you know, your sort of traditional view of a scientist, but, you know, there's so much more to that and making sure we have that diverse representation of sort of how women are doing work is important. And I know that's um, that stuff, Kelly, that I think you guys worked on as well um, and have done some some work on. Yeah, last year we also did a selfie campaign and I can drop the link to the infographic that we generated too, um, really just to get more images of women um, across the disciplines on Wikipedia and encouraging, if you had a Wikipedia article, encouraging women or anyone who wanted to, to take a selfie of themselves, how to upload it to Wikimedia Commons. Um, and being really careful that there was no just copyrighted information behind you, a blank wall, a kind of headshot selfie that you could add yourself to Wikimedia Commons without a conflict of interest um, issue on Wikimedia Commons so that it could be added to Wikipedia by someone else. I'll find that link. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, and feel free to, to drop those in the chat. 
Um, it looks like we're getting um, a couple of comments and questions, which is wonderful. Um, we're at the halfway point for this event, and um, I will be. I have a few more questions for our panelists here, but I'm also happy to have um, questions coming in from the audience. So please feel free if you have questions that you're interested in hearing the perspectives um, of our panelists, feel free to drop them in the chat or using the, the Q&A feature. Um, so I'm going to open up the, these questions to anyone who has an answer on the panel here. Um, so, so feel free to just jump right in. Um, and I think this question is something that I have thought a lot about in the 14 years I've been part of this movement. Um, and I don't think there's one right answer to this, right? But I'm interested in hearing different people's perspectives of it, um, which is to say, we can all agree that representation and women's representation on Wikipedia needs to get better. Um, but why do you think women are less represented on Wikipedia, both in terms of content and in terms of contributors? Who wants to jump in first? Rosie. Okay, I'll start. This will be short. I get asked this question too. And my response is, I think it rests on civil society. If more textbook editors included women, if more historians wrote about women, if more journalists wrote about women, there'd be more content that we could use to write articles about women on Wikipedia. Yeah, I, I totally agree with, with Bryce and Days. It's it's a question that sometimes I've, I've asked as well. Um, and since my project is, is about Latin American women or Mexican women, one of the problems we face the most is media coverage. Um, I have an Excel spreadsheet that it's called um, Women Under My Eyes or something like that, but it's like women scientists that I know they deserve their Wikipedia page because they have awards and they have this, but they don't have enough information in the media or in the textbooks or anything. So our names that I have like under my radar and when I see like, oh, maybe they won an award and they had the two or three interviews and then they cover more over things that I can start doing their, their biography or I can include it for um, edit-a-thons that, that we do. Um, and, and it's because, because of that, I mention often the example of a scientist, female scientist in Spain that I had the privilege to know her and I was like, she has a great career, Google her, bunch of information, no Wikipedia page. So I decided to do her biography and it was one of the fastest biographies I did because there was so much information about her that it was so straightforward to do it, you know, like um, it, it was really, really easy to do it. When, whereas maybe there are even better scientists in other places of, of Latin America that we don't have enough information to, to write about them. That about the content about female editors, I think it also relates on the fact that, again, I'm speaking in Latin America um, terms, there are still a lot of like gender tasks, house tasks, you know, women have to be in charge of the family, of the husband, of washing the dishes, doing the clothes, keeping the house clean, going to work in most cases. And as we've said it, editing Wikipedia is a volunteer work for most of us. So maybe giving the time there to sit down, learn how to edit Wikipedia, do it. It, it requires time, patience, and sometimes even some fighting over the internet. If someone is trying to delete your article and then is writing some nasty comments in there, and you have to have all this like emotional energy to put into writing a new article or even edit it. So I, I think it, it requires like multiple things in there that hopefully we're tackling little by little, but it, it still requires some, some work there. That's what I'm saying. And I would, to add to Marifer's Mar Mar um, response, I, I feel like that representation on Wikipedia for Mexican American women is just, I mean, it's not, it's because there's there's not enough information out there for, you know, for, for there to be a notable article created and there's not enough available publicly. And so that, you know, that creates a conundrum. And so we may, we may, or those women's contributions are subsumed into the men that they are, and I'm speaking historically, right? The men with whom they are connected to through different social movements and those kinds of things. And so their story sort of gets subsumed into those males, males men's biographies. And so oftentimes it's about, 
again, it's a, somebody in the chat put like we're invisible. It's about rendering visible what has long been invisible, right? And so I think to your point about, you know, just having more content, more research done, content readily available, right? I love the fact that you do that spreadsheet. I need to I need to probably do the same thing. Um, but again, it, it gives us a place to say, okay, well, if those the, the, these gaps exist, then why is we, I'm thinking as a professor, right? How can we better design our course, especially in the humanities, right? To fill in some of these gaps or we're across different fields and disciplines, right? Um, it's just, yeah. I definitely echo everything that you, all three of you have said so far. Um, in terms of the the editor base and who edit Wik, who edits Wikipedia, I definitely think about leisure time a lot. I think of myself as a, a newish mom. And if I didn't know how to edit Wikipedia before I became a mom, how difficult I think it would be able to take time to learn how to edit Wikipedia would be. And I really try to thoughtfully incorporate that into all of my public programs. Um, how can I distill editing Wikipedia into the most simplest terms and not get too into the weeds and all of the exceptions of exceptions? Here are the basics. If you care about this one thing, here's how you can get started to change a few sentences, walk away, watch it, come back, um, and be really intentional about just making small changes as still having a big impact. You don't have to necessarily write a 3,000 word article, but you can still make small impacts. So what as a facilitator do I need to do to kind of make it as streamlined and approachable as possible? Kelly, I think that's a really great point of, um, you know, that sometimes it's not even just sort of, you know, writing a full article or creating a new biography that you need to do, right? Sometimes small edits to existing articles can really bring out uh, meaningful changes. And even just in the language used in articles or things like that can make a, a really big difference in, uh, you know, in making sure that the women are better represented in articles. Um, we're getting some some great questions um, in the chat here. I want to ask one more of my um, of 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 my sort of prepared questions, and then I think we can get into to some of the questions from the chat. Um, which is what gives you hope for the future of a more gender inclusive Wikipedia that welcomes content about and contributors who are women, non-binary, or other gender identities. I think just in the last two years, I would say I see so much more conversation about Wikipedia than I did eight or 10 years ago, whether it be on Twitter or, you know, TikTok, whatever the case may be. We have Annie who runs the depths of Wikipedia account, which so many people love and have started editing Wikipedia because of some of the quirks of Wikipedia that they see on her page but also in conversations about AI and the implications of AI and what that means for Wikipedia. Um, I have a lot of hope that people are paying more attention to Wikipedia and really wanna safeguard it um, as one of the last really good places on the internet. Um, and that gives me a lot of hope that, you know, 10 years ago at a dinner party, someone would say, I don't understand what your job is, help me to understand. And now when I say it, people say, I love Wikipedia. I donate all the time. It means so much to me. This is so cool. Can you tell me more? Um, so even just in my own personal life, seeing how that conversation has shifted even a little bit gives me a lot of hope that people are paying a lot more attention to Wikipedia than they were in 2015 when I started editing Wikipedia. And that gives me a lot of hope, a lot of excitement um, that... There is a lot more attention being paid to Wikipedia because of how precious people are starting to realize it really is on the internet where there's a lot of misinformation. It's hard to find good fact-based info. People really understand that Wikipedia is that place. That's beautiful, Kelly. Thank you. Anyone else want to share what makes them hopeful about the future? I, I agree with what Ali is saying. I've also experienced this transition and positive change of what 
we thought Wikipedia was maybe 10, five, 10 years ago, what is now? Um, I remember when, when my professor put us this task of like, you're gonna edit Wikipedia as a final project in college. Some of fellow professors were like, oh, why? Like, why do you trust Wikipedia? Why are you gonna do that? Like, no, like you're just making your students lose time. Like, come on, they're gonna become scientists. Why are they losing time with Wikipedia? And now it's like, it's really nice to see that Wiki, you do, it's like doing more programs, opening more cohorts. A lot of professors are doing it. There are even books written about that. In Mexico, more, much more universities are doing it. And, and that's very encouraging and that's very positive. Um, not only about the content in general that is being written about Wikipedia, but about the focus that it's having. Um, like, like Amanda, that she's focusing on writing about women. Um, or Rosie that the rights about like writers and stuff like so we we are increasing also the the gender gap in the content of Wikipedia in the editors that that are doing it and I think that's changing the the perspective and for sure social media I think it's it's a good it's a good um it's a good tool to to make people like know like I have my um social media I use it to share my content about like my my PhD and like about my life as a, as a scientist but I also use it to, to share what I do in, in Wikipedia. And like a lot of people uh, are like, oh my God, like you, like, why do you edit Wikipedia? Like, how do you do it? And like, oh, I, I thought it was like only certain people could do it, or I thought it was more complicated than that. And as, as Kelly said before, it's sometimes a matter of like, just giving them the key pieces of like, okay, you just go here, create an account, start doing small changes, you know, maybe you would love, spelling and you love correcting those kind of things or grammar and you want to maybe restructure the sentences in an article that's that's good that's a good way to start so i guess just giving bits and pieces to to the people for a start it's a good thing and inviting to incorporate to one of to one of the projects we have i see a lot of people here in the in the chat very excited and maybe like willing to participate in our project so so that's great um i'll encourage you to contact us to, to get together with us and you are more than welcome to to our community to learn um, how to edit Wikipedia, to, to edit about whatever kind of like women or minorities you, you would like to do it. Cause it's it's something that, that we face. I would like to say last year during Pride Month, I wanted to write about um, trans women that were scientists. And it was so difficult because I couldn't find information about these people, you know? And I knew them, I knew that they were famous and like in their field and that they had information it was just like so little in there. And the moment I started editing um, the biography, I received a comment from a fellow editor being like, if the scientist did not earn this accomplishment before she transitioned, then they're not valid. And I was like, well, no, that's not correct. You know, like it's still the same person. Like, like they're valid and she's still being a great scientist before and after. Like it's, it's not not correct you know so that's what I, I mean when I was saying like it also requires some emotional you know challenge there and confrontation um always from the line of respect and everything but it does require for you telling people like your point of view the same way they are telling you theirs so yeah I started editing Wikipedia in 2007 when I had this aha moment that Wikipedia didn't actually have an article about everything, which in 2007, that's what I thought until I found that it didn't have an article about Book League of America, a defunct publisher of books that I was collecting at the time. And so since then, you know, I've learned more and more about all of the missing articles. But Kelly, something you said about how with AI things are changing, it feels like to me that now that we're, we've learned that AI is using the material that's already out there and people can learn that if you're that trusting the, the information that we find on Wikipedia because they are backed up by the references of that article, I think is going to be an impetus for more people to want to be involved and make sure that we add all those missing articles because we've learned no wikipedia doesn't have an article about everything and so by adding it to wikipedia will that information then will be fed into what's um, what the ai engines are using chat gpt and all of the rest yeah rosie i think that's a really good point i mean you know we you know the the more diverse we make wikipedia and the more we 
give space and room for women's accomplishments to be documented on Wikipedia, the more then they will be incorporated into the training modules of um, of the large language models like of, of uh, generative AI text-based um, systems like ChatGBT. And so, you know, the more we can do to add that to Wikipedia, the better the output from ChatGBT and the like will be, which is important. Um, so we have a bunch of questions that I would say are coming in all on kind of a similar theme, which is around notability and the gatekeeping of women's biographies on Wikipedia. Um, so I think the the questions is sort of, you know, how do you determine when a woman is deserving of a Wikipedia article? Is it subjective or objective? Um, and then another question around um, looking at the Women's Scientists link, I think the one you sent in there, Rosie, the recurring references to list of notable women without articles. How do women scientists and the accomplishments, but perhaps not the press, become notable enough to be on such a list and how are nominations? made to such a list? How can we, as potential writers of biographies, create these? And then uh, comment, could you comment on the impact of gatekeeping through the significance test? And at an edathon, for example, we had an article on a women comic artist turned down. Um, so I think these are all sort of themed around like, how do you establish notability and sort of who determines um, what notable is and like how um, objective really is that? Um, which Rosie, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this one to you first. I know you've had a lot of experience with this, uh, this particular question, but anyone else is welcome to to jump in as well. I think I'm gonna jump in with the who, who decides, who decides is every language Wikipedia's volunteer community gets to write its own policy or policies. It, every language community decides how we determine who is notable, how we decide the policy on the biography of a living person, how we decide what is a reliable source and what isn't a reliable source. So every language Wikipedia makes that decision and it's made by the volunteers. And that means your 15 year old next door neighbor and my 15 year old next door neighbor and a 15 year old person living in some other country somewhere else. We're all anonymous. So we don't know who is who is who, but that's who gets to decide the policies regarding notability in general, notability of um, living people and so forth. Um, so I'm gonna start with that and then see if my colleagues wanna jump in and um, take on some of the rest of your question, Liana. In terms of notability, I, when I was at the Smithsonian, I also made a lot of lists and added a lot of women from our archives into, you know, red links about notable women. And what empowered me to add them there was if there were three really good, solid sources about them specifically, not that mentioned them as an aside. That's a whole different conversation we can get into. We already talked about how women aren't written about as much, women aren't published about as much, but for me to put them on a list, typically that's what it would need. And then I would usually add a fourth link of information about them where, where there's information about them in the Smithsonian archives, let's say, or a finding aid. Um, so if there had been, you know, a profile about them in Time Magazine and then in their local newspaper, like in Charleston, it would be the Post and Courier. Um, and then, you know, maybe an obituary. Those three things would typically be enough for me to call that person notable and to add them to one of those lists. I kind of had a similar approach in my course. Um, I essentially like I had I assigned four texts over the course of the semester. And so I had the students and they were a, ride, a variety of texts, a wide range. One text was about Selena, the Hano music. One was about the Hano musicians. One was about um, just Mexican-American women's activism over the course of the 20th century. So there was lots of texts that we, we were already engaging with. And so I had the students sort of comb through the texts to find a biography of, a, you know, even some information about a particular, you know, woman who can, who took some sort of action at some particular moment in time that you wanted to look more deeply into. And so for me, like I created that, we, me and my students actually put together a list and we kind of just 
went from there and I gave them, it was a pretty rigorous research sequence where I gave them some time to, th to, to do some, just do a deep dive, see what you can find. Um, and so ultimately it was, um, you know, finding enough information about those women based on what was in those texts, but in other sources. So it made it a little um, less cumbersome for them in that way, but also them developing the list together and then us having conversations about that notability, I think helped them to feel a little more confident um, in trying to find it and, 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 being able, and being able to actually to accomplish this work. Um, so I don't know, it's, on the one hand, it's, you know, who decides, we, you know, there's, it's a big question. Um, but I think that for me, that was kind of my process, um, was helping students just to kind of understand that um, and how to take that, how to take that research and produce this piece of work for the public. That's great. Any, any other comments on, on this topic? If not, I, there's a there's a comment here from um, from Tasha who says she's a librarian and teach at, teaching to edit Wikipedia is a huge object lesson in a lot of our threshold topics that authority is constructed and contextual information has value and more. The fact that it is hard to find information on many women and or minority oriented topics really makes light bulbs go off for students and we can talk about systemic prejudice much more clearly with student discovered evidence of the problem. And I think that's, you know, we have, we have seen this in, in wiki education as well. I think those are the ACRL um, information literacy framework um, ones that, that Wikipedia editing is a really great mapping to those, um, those digital literacy elements. And you know, can be a um, a very important way of getting students to understand it in practice by having them identify it by doing the sort of content gap analysis on Wikipedia before they then jump into um, to edit themselves. Amanda, I see you nodding in, along with this. Um, do, do you have something you want to share on top of that? Uh, no, I just want to say that that's pretty much the experience that my students have have had e with each iteration. Every time I've done this, when I've taught the school, I've taught. So Mexican American women's history, and I teach Mexican American studies also. Mexican American studies are a more wide range of subjects, but I think that um, you know that that moment where again it goes back to I googled her and she wasn't there, and there's so many things that we that are invisible, and I feel like you know going back to the question about hope, what gives me hope for the future? I think about the fact that I think that as a society, we're hungry for these biographies. We're hungry for these histories. We, we, I've seen in the last at least five years on social media, folks just sharing biographies of, of, of individuals who did incredible things, who were extraordinary, ordinary people who were extraordinary and sharing those biographies out, you know, with, with the public. And it's, I think we're hungry for that. And I feel like in my classroom, I try to empower my students to, 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 to share, to share that information because it needs to be, I always say it needs to be documented somewhere. You can be that person, right? Um, and I think that's just incredibly powerful. And so I think, you know, when you have to do this kind of work, it, yeah, like, you know, our librarian colleagues said, right? It, it definitely, um, it hits students a little, a little, just like a, like, it's not there. And then conversations can open up, okay, but why is it not there? You know, it's, it's pretty powerful. That that's great. Thank you, Amanda. Any other comments on this or anything else? I think we've got a couple more minutes if somebody wants to share anything else you haven't said. Um, this has been a, a really great conversation. But if there's anything you wanted to say that you haven't had an opportunity to to say, um, please, please jump in and do so now. Okay, well, if not, um, it's I think we've addressed the questions in the chat as well. There's um, there's still really great comments coming in. Um, putting out images from magazines that haven't been copyright renewed can be a really powerful step. There are many artists and even scientists who can be added to Wikimedia Commons, absolutely. Um, and then a request to share username so we might be able to find courses. So if you're comfortable sharing that, please feel free um, to add those in, in the chat. 
Um, I want to close with a, a couple of just reminders of um, of Wiki Education, um, who is running this speaker series, does run a series of courses on how to edit Wikipedia. So those of you who are inspired by the wonderful panelists and want to help tackle Wikipedia's gender gap, um, you can go to learn.wikiedu.org. Um, and you can sign up for one of our courses. And um, I think, Mike, you were interested specifically in a sort of COI question, a conflict of interest question. That's one of the things that we delve into a fair amount in the courses of sort of making sure that people are following Wikipedia's rules and guidelines around what is and isn't okay um, to do. So I'd encourage you to, to check that out. And those of you who are um, inspired to teach with Wikipedia, especially after hearing um, Amanda's wonderful descriptions of, of her work with her students or Marifer's experience as a student herself um, at, uh, at teach.wikiedu.org. Um, and then obviously, if you're an experienced editor yourself, um, Rosie's Women in Red project is incredible and you should join it and help contribute to the filling those, making making those those red women blue. Um, as we say on Wikipedia, that's when you move, a red link is an article that doesn't exist and a blue link is one that does. Um, and then finally, Kelly, if there's uh, cultural institutions that are interested in, in adopting Wikipedia work, there is nobody better than Kelly to, to help you navigate that, um, the, that the, the, the structures of that. Um, so I would strongly encourage you to, to participate in, um, in all of the different projects. Um, I think Marifa dropped a link to her um, Wiki Scientificas Mexicanas in the, in the chat. So especially if you're interested in this, if you speak Spanish, that would be a great opportunity or it sounds like you're looking to expand it out into other language versions too. So um, we can we can get an English Wikipedia version going as well. Um, so, so thank you all for um, your time and interest in participating. Our next Wiki Education Speaker Series is coming up in April. Um, it is April 15th um, at the same 10 a.m. Pacific time, um, and it will be on Wikipedia and research. So we have a group of guest speakers who um, who will be studying, who have studied Wikipedia in their um, in their research profession as well. And so they will be talking about their findings and their research. And um, so I would strongly encourage you to register for that. We don't have the link up for registration yet, but it should be up later this um, this week and we will send a follow-up email to, to everyone who attended here with links from the session. Um, and I'll include a link to the, the registration for that one as well. Um, so with that, I wanna say another final round of virtual applause and thank you so much to our wonderful panelists here today um not just for sharing their time and work with us here but for all of the incredible work that they've done on wikipedia and wikidata and wikimedia commons and making our wonderful community more diverse and um i appreciate all that um, the four of you do all the time every day so and thank you so much for being here today thank you Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.